Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're looking for a very active worm farming community that is always willing to help each other out, no matter what their problems are, you are in the right place. And if you're not new here, these are something new. I do have a hand injury from some of my gardening yesterday in which I wasn't wearing these. So now when I'm working in the worm bin, I am gonna wear these gloves to protect my hands from anything that might get in there and cause me an infection. So today we're gonna take a look in on the red wigglers. We gave them a pretty decent feeding last time. And one thing I wanted to tell you is that I am completely out of castings. So I'm going to try and find something that I can harvest today. And um, that way I can start making worm tea again because I'm completely out. Looks like they're completely eating this uh, little avocado uh, seed there, so that's good. All right, so let's look, in, look at the last feeding here. Not really, I'm sure it's in one of these corners. You know, if I own, oop, wait a minute. See, with bare hands, I can't really tell if that's a worm ball or not. It felt squishy, but no. Just a, a higher concentration of the worms here in the corner where the food used to be. I'll put a picture up there as to what we fed them last time. I have a feeling that it was mango. The seed's no longer, it's not ready to pop open yet. Neither is this one. So we'll put that back and they can keep working on it. Let's look at the other side here. The top is really dry, but that keeps the bottom from evaporating. So that's actually not a bad thing to top them up with some dry bedding to kind of be a buffer um, for the next time. Well, I'm seeing a, this is the uh, cocoa pod. So they're still working on that. That happened uh, right around Christmas time last year when I put that in. So we can definitely call cocoa pods a super long food. Okay, it looks, oh, looks like we're getting some roots on this one. Ooh, all right, well, we'll put it back and let it keep going. I did get a couple already this year. I don't need to start a plantation in zone five of avocados. All right, so nothing super exciting on the top layer. Let's go down to the next layer down. Okay, here we are on the second layer down, and I think this is probably gonna be the prime candidate for me to find some castings to harvest. So let me just start scooping here and see what I have. These look like I can harvest some of these. So I'm gonna grab some out and then I will probably need to do a light harvest to remove the worms from the castings. So I'm gonna grab the stuff that's on the top here. If I don't go too deep, I probably won't get too much in the way of worms but I do need enough castings today to make some tea. So that is about half a gallon or a couple, let's see, two, four liters to a gallon. So that should be get me enough. I'll put that off to the side and then continue digging and seeing what they did with their food. Here's the risers. And uh, some people were asking how long they are, and they're a couple inches long. I'll have to put the centimeters in there. But uh, this just keeps this layer from getting compressed, allowing the worms a little bit more wiggle room, if you will. So let's dig in here and see what we've got. Much more, you know, moist down here. Got a big avocado, but no, there must not have been anything worthy of hanging out in there. But this, uh, this is Red Wigglers in here and they do really well in this DIY stack system. Some people run theirs a little bit wetter than I do, but I am not trying to actively breed a higher population. So that is not my goal. If I wanted more worms, I would definitely make this more damp in here. This appears to be where we fed last time. I see the new bedding I added. Let's see what we've got left in the way of food. I think it's been about three weeks. So we've got some avocado shells that are, or pits that are already turning into paste. That's pretty, that's pretty uh, remarkable. That's pretty fast. Normally these, the, whoop, holy cow. I almost squished some worms. They're inside. 
of the, the pit there. That's amazing. I've never seen that before. Okay. So let's look under here and see if there's any other food left. I think we had some pineapple, some mango, some greens, and I'm not really seeing any of it in here. Looks like the bedding is, is holding up pretty good. But since I did take out, I wonder if I can get some more. Let me try and get some more. Let me get another container. We can kind of do a refresh on this, on this layer, a partial refresh. And we'll, I'll show you how I get the worms separated from the castings when I'm trying to do it quickly. I bet I can even get more. Not sure how long this has been going. Probably about three, maybe six months. Okay. That's good. Then I can add some more bedding and food when we put it back together. Let's look at the bottom. I might get more castings yet. All right, I'll get the little risers out and then kind of go through here and see if there's anything that I can harvest. I am seeing a lot of cocoons down here. So it looks like this layer I'm seeing, it's much, much wetter. I'm seeing a lot of springtails down here, but I'm also seeing a ton of cocoons. So these guys are very happy down here. There's the other riser. Okay, I don't think the moisture is so wet that I need to add more cardboard to this. Um, I think this is safe to just leave as it is. So I'll put these little risers back in here and we will reassemble. And that second layer is definitely gonna need some new bedding and some more food. So let me put that back together. Okay, here we are back at the second layer. I'm gonna mound up what was left over and then we're going to start a whole new area over here. So this is some of my prepared bedding that I make with the shredded cardboard and paper and coconut coir. And then usually in the water, I will add some liquid kelp or liquid seaweed. And that will help get this uh, a little bit more nutrients in there for the microbes to start working on it. So now that they've got some new bedding over here, let's get them some good food. Okay. These uh, reusable bags, I do have those in my Amazon store. There's a link below. So they've got two bananas and a uh, vinegar scoby. We'll see how that goes. That's a little bit of an experimental food for me. And let's see what's in here. Mangoes and banana peels. So that's a pretty good feeding for this, for this side here. Okay, now let me go get the top layer. All right, here we are back at the top layer. And, you know, this is getting a little bit dry. I think I am going to try and get... I took the top bedding off of this so that I could add it in the water from my prepared bedding so that when I feed these guys, I'm also going to be adding, you know, some new wet bedding. It's, it's not exactly prepared bedding, but it does have the same stuff in it. So it was prepared bedding once upon a time. So let's get that. Okay, it's not completely wet, but it has absorbed quite a bit of that water. So let's get these guys some more food and some of their favorites. Okay, so these guys are gonna get some melon. This has been frozen. Uh, put your comments below. Even though you feed frozen food, have you ever noticed that the seeds still germinate even though you froze things? I have been getting so many volunteer tomatoes 
in my garden this year, and I know all of the tomatoes that I put in my worm bins were all frozen, and yet I'm getting all kinds of volunteers. Put that in the comments below, you know, do you have the same problem with uh, volunteer vegetables, like maybe pumpkin or tomatoes? Because I am just seeing a lot of it this year. Then I'm gonna cover this back up with the old stuff. Ooh, how did I miss that? We have a worm ball inside of a banana top. Well, there we go. Being cute for the camera. Good worms. I'm gonna put you back under there so everything's good for you guys. All right, now we're gonna move on to the light harvest of the castings that I just took off the middle layer here. Okay, here we are with the light harvest. And the way that works is there's a super bright shop light above me and then I will let the worms dive down and then I take the top off here, give them a little bit longer to, to dig down deeper and then very slowly over time, I will get basically pure castings. If there's any worms in there from when I get done making the worm tea, they'll just go in the garden and go live their best life. So hang on and I will show you what I'm doing here. But the worms that uh, kind of get taken off of here, they'll go back into the bin with the rest of the red wigglers. As will any, you know, big food chunks that I find. It takes about five minutes for them to dive down into the castings before you can scoop them off the top. And then you just come in and scoop up the top on all the different sides. And you go as deep as you need to go to where you don't have any worms. or not very many worms.
Okay, there we go. I think this is good enough. Now let's scoop this up and then you can see that this is a full-on worm ball. Probably half a pound, maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to put these right back in the red wiggler bin. And I'll keep going on these guys because these guys were a little late to the game. But uh, that is how you separate worms from castings in a hurry. I know a lot of people that sell worms for a living do it this way. Um, just to give you an idea, I've been working on this for about 45 minutes to an hour to uh, extract my castings. And uh, I got probably about a gallon and a half of castings, which is about, I don't know, four liters. All right, so I'm going to keep going with this, but if you like this kind of worm content, I have a playlist right over here for the Red Wigglers. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.